this is a, a sculpture that I made maybe my fifth visit here, so 2013. Uh, it was inspired by a photograph, a beautiful black and white photograph of Beatrice in the center, and she's sitting in this arch of bamboo, which is such a favorite spot on the property. Just the, the shape of the arch, it's kind of a temple shape to it. Her interest in India and um, the this spot, not only the bird, the bird life, and every evening hearing the birds coming in at night and nesting and rustling around. This has always been a favorite spot of mine to sit. And I did a lot of work on these cement pedestals my first year here, so this was a spot that I kind of grew attached to. And um, the photograph shows Beatrice sitting in the arch, in a stool, on a stool. Um, so I created this piece with that in mind. I really wanted to capture the shape of that arch and the feel of the bamboo. And I, I used a, a technique of uh, a very frontal piece, um, almost like a, a, a niche or a shrine you would see um, in many cultures, whether in, in India or in, in Central or South America. Uh, kind of a traditional form with her inside and using the white base, a white base glaze with a lot of stains and oxides on top, give, um, inspired by artists like Bernard Palisse, um, the Maiolica techniques in Della Robbia, uh, kind of lush, starting with a white glaze and then staining on top. So and letting the clay breathe through and the lushness of the glaze against the matte regions of the figure. And the pinks on her, um, that, the pink moment here, which when the sun's setting and the mountains glow pink for just a few seconds, right at this moment of the sunset, everything glows pink. So I put her in the pink moment. <laughs> I started making this piece as a demo for my students um, at the end of the day. I got going and re it, it got dark quite quickly when everybody left. It was pitch dark and I, my eyes kind of adjusted uh, as they will. And it was a, uh, there's quite a bit of moonlight. So I was able to keep working without any, any other light. Um, I decided just to just work with the moonlight and um, look at the, the bamboo that was what I was seeing. And a lot of it was the tunnel from working from here through. There was still the sense of a bright light through it, and and the leaves were coming out with the moonlight. They were, as we say, sort of punched out. Uh, the relief of the leaves, I could see still the shapes, and um, and sometimes I I have an extra I have an exercise from working at night, going out and just working at night, sketching on, in in the pitch dark uh, at what you're seeing. <laughs> it was interesting. It's the first time that I actually worked in clay outside in the dark, the moon in this case, and in the morning to really see what I got, come out and see what, what it looked like, because I never saw it until the morning. And the sensibilities from that experience also worked their way into the final patinas and coloring and, and the glazing of this piece, the, the, the choices. I was still thinking of the, the moonlight and how it looked in the moonlight, but simultaneously that pink moment I wanted to get in with this sort of pink overlay. So that's kind of an interesting combination of a moonlight and pink moment. <laughs> Sunrise. My name is Kevin Wallace. I'm director of the Beatrice Woods Center for the Arts in Ojai, California. And we've been working with Allison Newsom for about a decade now, um, having exhibitions, having workshops, and residencies where she's up here working. So I have, I've had a lot of experience watching her work, learning about how she thinks, how she approaches the work. And she's really distinctive, not only in her approach, which has to do with the wilderness, the agrarian, human life, 
the relationship between people and nature, um, the industrial, the way the world changes and such. Um, so she, her approach is different that way, but the way her mind works is, is really interesting. She's very academic in a certain way. She grabs ideas and historical context and then runs with it and then reinvents or creates bodies of work based upon historical works. So she's always thinking about history. She has a, an academic knowledge of the history of ceramic art, and, but she brings to it something that's really fresh and open and very inventive. And watching her work, um, there, there, there's two pieces that come to mind. One is a piece, of, it's a figure in the bamboo. And that all started because she saw a photo by an artist, a photographer named Robert Hale. And this Robert Hale photograph has Beatrice Wood sitting in this bamboo arch that's behind the center, this part of the grounds of the center here. And what the photographer did is he decided to have her sit there and then he brushed a bunch of leaves in, the bamboo leaves around her feet, to get this poetic photo. And he, he told, and so she was posing, he said, oh, give me a minute, let me get set up here. And so he managed to get a shot of you know, deep in thought where she was sitting there and she was thinking, she didn't realize she was going to be photographed. And it's this wonderful, pensive photograph of Beatrice Wood. So that photo sort of haunted Alison. Uh, Alison kept thinking about it and thinking about it. That relationship between nature and the figure really appealed to her. So basically she created a work based on that photo or just the inspiration for that photo, but she ran with the idea. So it's not a portrait of Beatrice Wood. It's, it's a woman and she's sitting there. Um, and she actually was working in the bamboo in, in the darkness. I, I tried shooting footage at the time because we knew we were going to do some documentary work with Allison. And the footage, of course, is pitch black because she's out there in the dark, but she's feeling the clay and, and feeling the bamboo and, and working there. And, it, and it's nighttime and all of the quail have flown up and they're roosting in the bamboo. And it was just amazing watching her work in that way. The other interesting thing about the way she works is she's very fast. She's almost like an abstract expressionist, but with clay, the way she pulls it together, the way she has a feel for it, the way she's very um, loose and free, but yet she knows the material. She knows what she can get away with and what she can't get away with. So she bent rules a lot. And when I see people taking workshops with her, she's doing things that you're not supposed to do, sort of, but she knows what she can do. And, and, and so it might not work for somebody else, but she knows what she's doing. So it's fascinating to watch her do that. Um, the other interesting thing, the other piece that was interesting to me by her was one where there was a fall, there's this fallen tree that's been there probably, probably fell decades ago, because you can tell it's been rotting and it's old. But there was something about that character of the tree that interested her. And so she went down and she sat in that spot, she took photos of that tree from all different angles, and she came back up to the studio and she began working on it. And it was basically, again, just this idea, just the way that this particular tree looked and the idea of the figure and the relationship with nature. So she, so she goes with the smallest impulse, the, the, the little thing that just kind of gets under her skin and inspires her, and she sticks with it until she pulls the work of art out of that. The base of the hill, when you come up to the Beatrice Wood Center, down in a field, there's a beautiful, really old oak tree that's fallen. And all that's left of it is the largest part of it, and it's a beautiful arch. And I, I've always admired it, hiked down to it. We had a hurricane in Rhode Island, Hurricane Sandy, and a lot of our really old trees down 
and I, and I drove around and took pictures of some of the trees that came down. And some of the trees, in the destruction, there was still beauty formally. The way they, the forms that they made now that they're reclining and splintered out on one end or kind of semi-arches and purely formally looking at these shapes of these fallen trees after the hurricane. And I did a series of pieces. The one is figure with falling apple tree, figure with fallen pine tree. This is figure with fallen oak tree. And it's really part of a series that's ongoing. The natural arch form, I'm attracted to like the, the arch and the bamboo. Uh, the walking in the orange grove, you have sort of the arching as you're going down the the tunnels of greenery, and there's a lot of sort of natural tunnels. And the figure is kind of crouching. I wanted her to feel like the tree is protecting her. She's found shade, or she's found a nice little spot to rest. And I wanted this piece to all be the same color. So the forms of the tree and the forms of the figure all merge together. This is pretty much the scale. If I were to sit the actual tree in the arch would be more or less the same size. I wanted that, that to come through. We use this pose here at the center. We had our model in this pose and I used it for this.